Hi everyone! Welcome to Facebook Live today. This week I am Ruth Norton, Stampin' Up! Demonstrator in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Um, if you're in the U.S., I would love to be your demonstrator if you don't have a demonstrator already. Um, if you don't have any catalogs, please let me know. I'd love to get those in the mail for you as well. Okay, we're going to start with some announcements. And if anybody needs to place an order, if you need to buy anything, need to place an order, if you see something you like as I'm demonstrating, please head to my website. You can shop using this host code. All orders using the host code this month are going to receive a PDF with three new exclusive projects. And um, if your order is over 150, don't use the host code. I'll still send you the email. But we're gonna get to let's get, get to some little promotions going on this month, little things that you need to be aware of this month, and then we'll get to the project. So this this weekend is the last weekend to RSVP for my fall festival class. If you are in Albuquerque and you want to attend an in-person class with me, I would love to have you. This fall festival class is October 12th, and if you message me or email me, I will give you more details on this class. It's going to be amazing. We're going to make four fall themed cards and there's going to be fall festival games where you can win prizes and it's going to be pretty fun. My son has been helping me plan the games and they're pretty fun. I'm going to tell you, they're pretty fun. He's pretty creative, so they're a lot of fun. But the last day to RSVP for that class is this weekend on October 5th. Okay, um, coming up this month, you guys only have until the 10th of... October this month to subscribe to Paper Pumpkin. October and November's kits are going to coordinate together. They are both Christmas themed. October's kits is going to contain 10 cards and November's kit is going to contain 24 tags. Um, if you want October's kit, the last day to subscribe is October 10th. You must be subscribed by October 10th or you're not going to get October's kit. So um, there's a link to subscribe in the video comments or in the video description. And um, make sure you do that by the 10th, which is coming up. I think it's next, it's next Thursday. It's in a week. It is. It's in a week from today. So you only have a week to subscribe to this. The deadline for my class to go is also in a week. And I didn't grab, the, I, don't, I didn't grab that stamp set, but it is with the Christmas Gleaming set. Let me, let me grab my holiday catalog real quick. Do I have it in hand? Here it is. I will pull out, I will show you the, it is with the Christmas Gleaming set, which is a gorgeous, gorgeous stamp set. Let's see if I can find it. Um, it comes with, the bundle comes with two punches. And, la la la, here we are. So it's the um, Christmas Gleaming set. So the set is down here. So this is the stamp set, and then the punches coordinate with the, with the two ornaments so you get the smaller ornament and then the larger ornament and that is my class to go and I didn't put a comment or a link to that in the description but I will leave one in the comments as soon as the video is over but the, you only have until October 10th to sign up for that and there's three options for my class to go so make sure you head to that link if you're interested if brightly gleaming or the Christmas gleaming bundle is already on your list make sure you head to my my blog and check out my class to go all right finally it is a fantastic, fantastic time to join Stampin' Up! And I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you two reasons why right now is the fantastic time to join Stampin' Up! Um, Stampin' Up! has released a new paper trimmer. Yay! I can't wait to get it. I've already ordered mine. It should be on its way very soon. And um, I cannot, I cannot wait to get it. So only demonstrators right now are allowed to pre-order that paper trimmer. If you um join Stampin' Up! If you join the, my team, join Stampin' Up! You can add that trimmer to your starter kit, which is a fantastic deal. And also going on right now, demonstrators are allowed to pre-order this incredible suite of products. Can you see all of that? There's so much stuff here. This is the Christmas time is here suite. This will be available for customers on November 1st, but demonstrators can pre-order all of this now. And um, you can also add any of this to your starter kit too. This is all coming in November, but demonstrators get it ahead of time. There's DSP, there's gold ribbon, there's go gold glitter enamel dots. There's a, like a bangle bracelet, really pretty. Um, a double set stamp set. Um, and I'll show you this. This is a stamp set. This is what it looks like. Um, and then also dies to go with it. So a huge suite of products. You can add this to your starter kit if you join my team. Otherwise you'll have to wait till November. 
and then this is only available while supplies last. So if you want to guarantee that you get it, um, joining Stampin' Up! is a great way to do it. And again, you can add that new paper trimmer too. Okay, we're going to move on to the project for today, and it is really cool. So isn't that cute, you guys? This is with the new um, Mercury Glass. I don't know if you guys have seen that in the catalog. Let me see if I can find that. Um, but the Mercury Glass, I feel like it's kind of hidden. A lot of people, and we'll see if I can even find it. It's, um, I feel like it's hidden. It's like a little hidden gem. It's down here on page 33. But it's so cool. And I can't wait to, sh to show you this project. Um, the, the cool thing about the Mercury Glass, let me get out my paper. So you can see how, I mean, it's like acetate. It's very cool. You can see right through it and it picks up any color behind it. And then it turns it kind of like holographic. And I know that my lights are kind of hitting it and you're not getting like the full effect. It's really, really cool. So we're actually going to start with the paper that's under that mercury glass and we're going to watercolor that paper. So let me move this stuff out of the way and bring in everything we're gonna watercolor with. So I have um, some watercolor paper, and this is larger than it needs to be. This is what, this is like five by five and a half. We're gonna end up trimming it down. When I watercolor, I like to start with something larger than it needs to be, and that way um, you can trim it down and cut off any of those edges. Sometimes the watercolor edges kind of mess it up. Um, I also have a piece of chipboard. This is a little chipboard clipboard that I've had for years and years. Um, and we're going to watercolor on this and that just, that, that'll help me if I need to pick it up or anything. So I am going to pull out, I have our spritzers. These are such a great deal. You get two of them for, I think $3, such a great deal. Um, this just has water in it. I have an aqua painter and I have um, my large, well, not my largest block, but a large block. This is block E. Okay, so I'm gonna put this over here and then I have three colors of reinkers. Now you can watercolor with ink pads and that's actually what I did with this card. I used my ink pads to watercolor, but the color, um, it took a lot of layers to get that color as vibrant with the ink pads. So I thought for this card, we're gonna just gonna straight to reinkers and that's gonna help our the vibrancy. So I am just putting a few drops of the reinker onto my block. Now, if you don't want to use a block, that's fine. You can use any non-porous surface. You can use um, like a plastic plate or something. That's fine too. The blocks, I mean, that no damage comes to the block, so you don't have to worry about that. And the three colors I am using are Coastal Cabana, Grapefruit Grove, and Rococo Rose. Okay, so we're going to start with our paper and I'm going to use my spritzer and I'm going to spray it a couple times and I'm actually going to kind of I'm going to I don't want to spray the the ink so I'm going to hold it up just so it, if it does go everywhere it doesn't get that now I don't want my paper like soaking wet I don't want the water dripping off but I do want it like damp so the water's going to or the ink will move all by itself okay and you do want to make sure you have some kind of paper towel or baby wipe or something available I'm going to grab one of I'm going to grab a baby wipe just to clean everything off when you're done. Okay, so I think we're ready. I'm going to squeeze a little bit of water just to less intensify that. And I'm just going to start dropping that in. And you can see that because we've sprayed our, our paper, that ink is going to just move all by itself. I'm going to do the same thing with the Grapefruit Grove. And I'm just going to let them kind of start blending together. They'll do their own thing. They'll blend together. It'll be fine. A little bit of water in my Rococo Rose. We're going to bring that in. I'm going to water down my Rococo Rose just a little bit more. It's a little intense. I don't want it too super intense. Now we do need to kind of keep moving out. We need to go kind of close to the edge. This paper is pretty close to the size we need it to be. I'm going to bring in some more of my Coastal Cabana. Bring it on over here. And it doesn't really, I know it kind of looks like a hot mess now, but I'm t once we put that um, acetate on top, it's going to just kind of hide any imperfections. It's going to look pretty amazing. We're going to move this over here. And if you notice your colors aren't moving as much as you want them to, you can spray it again with some, with your spritzer. You can use your um, aqua painter to just kind of move some of those colors along just to help those colors blend, help them move along. You just want those edges nice and defined. I'm going to kind of hold this up. I 
think that's good. I think I'm going to try to do the corners a little bit more. I think we're just going to try to hit those corners a little bit just to make sure we have enough coverage on this. All right, I think that is that is good. And now I'm just going to set this aside so it can dry completely. And I'm just, so I'm just going to move my entire clipboard. Easy peasy. Move that aside so it can dry completely. And then you can, I have a lot of ink left here. I could do another card, but for the sake of the video, I'm just going to use my baby wipe and clean that up. And your block is as good as new. Okay, let's move on to the next part of our card. While that's drying, we're going to do some embossing. Let me put these water tools away because goodness knows that will be a disaster. The stamp set that we're using, I didn't even tell you, we're using the Gather Together Bundle. So it's this stamp set and then um, the dies. We're using four of the dies that come with it. Um, there's more dies in the die set as well. So, but these we're using four of them from the set and then the Gather Together stamp set, which is, I've been addicted to this one. I have made so many cards with this bundle. It's phenomenal. You all need it. It's, it's amazing. Okay, we're gonna start with our, with our pumpkin, with our embossing. Actually, let's do both of our embossing at the same time. We, we only have to bring out our heat tool once. So I just have a scrap piece of watercolor paper we're gonna do our stamping and embossing on for the pumpkin. Let me bring in the cardigan so we know what we're doing. And then I have a half inch, I think, well, it's three eighths of an inch piece of Rococo Rose and we're gonna stamp our greeting on this. Okay, I have Versamark ink. Before we do any stamping though, we need to get out our embossing buddy. This is just going to help embossing powder stay only on the inked parts and not stray away. So we'll start with our pumpkin. And I'm using silver embossing powder. I should get that out too. So I have my embossing powders in little containers. It just makes it easier to use. Okay, I'm going to ink up my, my pumpkin. And we're going to stamp that and the watercolor paper is a little textured this would be a good opportunity to use your stamp apparatus in case you didn't get good coverage you can stamp it again i'm pressing pretty firmly and i'm holding it there for a minute just so that watercolor paper can take in all that ink and then we're just going to sprinkle on and there's our pumpkin so cute right i love it so we'll heat that up in just a second i want to do my my greeting as well and i'm going to stamp this more to the right than to the left, but not quite all the way to the right. Let's see if I can get this nice and straight without, hold on, let me move it down just a little more. I don't want to put my head under the camera. I think that's pretty good. And then we're just gonna sprinkle our embossing powder on that. So glad to have you in my life, perfect. Okay, we are going to put away our embossing powder and our ink before things get crazy. Okay, now we'll bring in our heat tool and we'll do some embossing. Now, um, if you follow my videos, if you've seen me emboss before, you know that I heat my heat tool up off to the side before I bring it over and that helps the warping, that helps your paper warp a lot less and it, um, it makes the embossing go a lot quicker. So, about 10 or 15 seconds off to the side already starting to change. You just want to heat it just until it's nice and glossy. And our pumpkin is all done. Can you see how gorgeous that is? And then we're going to bring in our greeting. And that will go nice and quick because our heat tool is nice and hot. So glad to have you in my life. A little bit more in the middle. There we go. Perfect. Okay. So I am going to... Okay. Now we're going to watercolor our little pumpkin. And this one I am gonna use the ink pads. I don't need a ton of a ton of color on this one, so I am gonna use the ink pad. So I'm just going to kind of squeeze my ink pad together when it's closed, open it up, and I have a nice little puddle of, of ink in there. I'm gonna pull out my aqua painter again, make sure it's nice and clean. It's a little muddy, so that's okay. We're gonna pick up some color, and I want the darkest color to be on the bottom, and so I'm gonna start on the bottom. And with the aqua painter, it's so easy on watercolor paper just to kind of move that color up and it'll get lighter as you move up. So fun. And the embossing just kind of keeps all that ink where it needs to be. The embossing will resist any of the ink. So embossing with um, 
watercoloring is just really like a match made in heaven. Okay, the stem I do want a little darker, so I'm gonna come in and just kind of make that a little darker. You don't want to saturate this too much because it's just gonna take a long time to dry. So I'm gonna set that aside. That looks pretty good. You do want to kind of go darker than you think you want it on your card because the watercolor will lighten a little bit as it dries. So I think that's pretty good for our pumpkin. We're gonna set that aside. We're gonna cut that out in just a minute. So let's get the rest of our pieces together. Let me move this stuff a little bit out of the way. We're gonna bring in our big shot. We're gonna cut our, our leaves. And once you get all your pieces together for this card, once everything's nice and dry, you have all your pieces together, this card goes really quick. So I'm going to start with my magnetic platform. And then we have our three dies. Now these dies are pretty amazing. They come in that, that bundle, that come together or gather together bundle and they cut and emboss. You see all that detail in those leaves. You're going to get that same detail in your, your leaves when you die cut them. So I have three scraps of paper, the same colors that we've been using. I have coastal cabana, a uh, rococo rose and um, grapefruit growth. Now to just kind of intensify that detail in those leaves, I'm going to give each paper a little spritz with, I'm going to do this off to the side too, because I don't want I don't want to spray anything else but I'm going to give them a little spritz of water with my sprayer and that's really going to help with when you emboss them wet it's really going to help that detail just kind of be more defined so a little bit a little spritz so stick this one on here we'll stick this one on here and this one on here perfect where's my top plate here we go we're just going to run this through a die cutting machine and you'll see the amazing texture you get with that. Okay, so here is our first leaf, and these don't take long to dry. You didn't put too much water on there, just enough to kind of dampen it, and look at all that cool texture, isn't that? When the paper is wet, it allows those dyes to just go in a little bit deeper, and so you get a much deeper texture, and look at that one, so cool. And if your dies are stuck in here, see that one's stuck in here, just drop it on the table and it'll come right out. And look at that one. That one is incredible. And those darker colors that you see, those will actually kind of stay there. They'll lighten up a little bit, but they will remain a little bit shaded. So really fun tip if you're using these embossing and cutting dies. Okay, we have one more thing to die cut and that is our pumpkin. So I'm going to bring in my, my plate again. This is pretty, it's close to being dry. We're gonna call it good. So I'm going to, my magnet's gonna jump. I'm gonna grab a little piece of post-it tape here just to hold it down because we don't want, we don't want it to jump around. So I'm going to get this where everything is nice and lined up. Looks good and I'm just gonna stick that down. So it stays nice and put. I think I'm out of the shot, sorry guys, there we go. And then we're just gonna run this through our die cutting machine. Perfect. And there's our fantastic little pumpkin, so cute. Okay, we are ready to start assembling. Let me get this die cutting machine out of the way. And put the plate back in. Okay, we are ready to start assembling. Let's see if our, our piece is dry, not quite dry. So what I'm gonna do is just heat this with the heat tool because you just, we have to trim it down and you definitely don't wanna trim it when it's still wet. So let's just get this thing nice and dry. So I'm gonna heat, get my heat tool nice and hot. And we're just gonna get this nice and dry. It won't take too long. You can see how beautiful it is as it's drying. All those natural lines, we didn't really do anything to help it blend. We just made sure that the paper was nice and wet and it, that's going to really make those colors just blend on their own and it's so beautiful don't you think there's some nice little blooms of color there okay i think that's good we're gonna call it good anyway we're gonna hopefully there's one little wet spot right there but we're gonna cut that off so it doesn't matter too much okay, this is mostly dry so we are going to i'm going to use my my other paper trimmer i don't have my other my new one yet so we're going to use this one um i'm going to just start by trimming off some of these edges that we don't want so we want this paper this paper to be cut down to three and a quarter 
by four and a half. So I'm gonna trim off just a little bit more of this end and we're gonna cut it to three and a quarter. Perfect, and the paper is just a little bit warped from being wet, so you just gotta make sure everything is nice and straight. And what did I say, four and a half? That's what I said, four and a half, so. And when you trim it down, you can see that you can just trim off all of those little imperfections and you're left with just a gorgeous piece of paper. Isn't that beautiful? I frame that, it's so pretty. Okay, we can move out all of our little water paper scraps out of the way, and then when we put our, our acetate on top of it, it's just gonna pick up all of those colors underneath. It's just gonna make it look so, so cool. Okay, we're gonna start assembling. We're actually gonna set this aside just for another minute. We have the rest of our pieces coming in. We have our card base, which is Rococo Rose. This is eight and a half by five and a half. I've scored it at four and a quarter. Get my bone folder. And I'm gonna put on top of that a piece of Coastal Cabana. And this is five by three and three quarter, five by three and three quarters. We're gonna stick that right on our card base. I'm gonna use some snail for that. It doesn't matter, I don't know why I keep going back and forth. It's the same on both sides. This one doesn't have any stamping, it's good. So you just wanna make sure you have that nice little border around the whole card. Beautiful. And we're gonna start layering up our pumpkin piece. So, where's my pumpkin? Here's my pumpkin. And I have all my leaves on the here. So I'm gonna put just some adhesive, just some snail adhesive on the back of our pumpkin. And we're just gonna start layering it up. I'm gonna start with my, my grapefruit grove one. This one's gonna kinda go off to the side a little bit this way. And we're gonna put on our Coastal Cabana one, just like that. I'm gonna put a little bit more adhesive just to make sure everything's nice and secure. And then our Rococo Rose one's just gonna go on the back, just like that. So we have our nice little layered piece. Now I do wanna add one more detail to this. I'm gonna put a little bit more adhesive on the back and I'm gonna use my rose thread here. So I am just going to wrap this around a couple of fingers. We don't want a huge loop. It's so just a couple of fingers, maybe two or three. I'm just gonna go with two. And we're just gonna wrap this, I don't know, just eight, nine, 10 times. We just want a nice little bundle of the thread. We have a nice little kind of nest. And I'm just gonna make sure holding those two ends that I just stick that down just like that. And we can kind of separate those a little bit, make it look a little messy. So I don't know if you can see it. So cute, right? So cute, I love that. Okay, let's move on. We're gonna finish assembling. Let me grab some dimensional. Oh, I didn't grab dimensionals, holy cow. We're going to put some on here just to finish holding that that uh, metallic thread down just in case it wanted to move. We're just gonna make sure it can't. So we're gonna add a few more dimensionals in the back. So this is gonna be ready to go. We're just gonna peel off those backings. So we are all ready to finish assembling. Okay, so let's move on to, let's go back to our watercolor piece in our mercury glass. Now you can use glue dots to um, stick this down. I am actually just gonna use snail. Once it's on there, you're not gonna notice any, any adhesive at all. So I'm just gonna do a line of snail along here and then this is the same size so it should line up exactly and if there's any overhang you could just use your scissors and trim it all off and isn't that so cool I hope that there's not too much glare I hope you guys can see that that it's just so it's so fun so so fun and we're just gonna stick this on the back I'm gonna use quite a bit of adhesive on this watercolor paper just to make sure nothing nothing lifts up as it finishes drying a little bit and we're just gonna stick this to a piece of Grapefruit Grove, which I didn't measure this one. This one is three and a half by four and three quarters. So it's just a quarter inch larger than what we cut that watercolor piece to. Beautiful, right? All right, where did our, where did our greeting go? Here it is. We're gonna stick this on. So I'm just putting a little bit of adhesive just on the back of that. We're gonna stick this on. This should just cover this exactly. Did I get that straight? Not too bad. I'm gonna stick that down, perfect. And then we have our little pumpkin cluster over here. And we're just gonna lay that right on top. Beautiful, beautiful. Now we are gonna pop this up with dimensionals as well. So this card has a lot of dimension. You don't have to use dimensionals here if you don't want it to be 
overly dimensionalized. But just be aware this card is very thick so um, the post office might not like it. You guys know how the post office is. They don't like those thicker cards sometimes. And then this is just going to go right onto our, our card base right over that Coastal Cabana piece. So pretty. One more quick step. I'm going to take my Winga Stella pen and I'm just going to go over that pumpkin just to give it a little bit of sparkle. And that sparkle and shine on the pumpkin is really going to make that metallic thread pop out. It's really going to tie into that as well as all the shine you're getting from that mercury glass. So cute. What do you guys think? That is our card for today. Let me move some of my tools out of the way so we can get a good look at the cards. So pretty. And I love these soft colors for fall. I really think that the, that's such a good color combination for fall. All right. If you need to place any order, if you need any supplies, please head to my online store. Use this host code. Um, once I see that order come through, I will email you the PDF with three exclusive projects. The projects in this month's PDF are fall and Christmas themed. So perfect for this time of year as you're creating your fall and Christmas projects. Um, I do want to mention a couple other things real quick before I go. Saturday, this Saturday, October 5th is World Card Making Day. If you are not already a member of my VIP group, you want to make sure you join my VIP, VIP group. I am planning to go live with two or three projects on Saturday. Now my family is going to the Bloom Fiesta on Saturday, so I'm not sure of timing yet. Um, but I will try to post as soon as I know of a kind of estimated time where I will try to go live. But um, make sure you join that VIP group because it's going to be a fun day of card making. And I may or may not have some prizes to give away. So you want to make sure you join my VIP group and make sure you join me on Saturday for World Card Making Day. Otherwise, I will see you guys next Thursday for another amazing project. If you have any questions, please let me know. If you're watching this on Facebook, I would love it if you shared this video with your friend. If you're watching this on YouTube later, um, I'd love it if you liked and subscribed to my channel. Thank you so much. Have a great day. Bye.